Hello everyone. An experienced ship captain asked a young cadet, What will you do if you encounter a situation where you are on the open waters and a sudden storm occurs? I will drop an anchor, captain, the cadet replied. What will you do if another storm sprang up afterwards? I will drop another anchor, the cadet answered. And what if another terrific storm hit afterwards, the captain asked. I will drop another anchor, the cadet said. The captain continued, What if there is another storm? The cadet said once again, I will drop another anchor. Now hold on, young man, said the captain. Where are you getting all your anchors from? From the same place you are getting your storms, captain, the cadet answered coolly. Friends, most of us are familiar with the concept of an anchor in the nautical sense. An anchor is one of the most important safety equipment on any ship. It holds your ship firmly in place and prevents it from drifting away due to the wind or the currents. The term anchor is found four times in the New Testament of the Bible. Three times it is used in its literal sense in Acts chapter 27 verses 29, 30 and 40. When the ship carrying St. Paul to Rome got stuck in violent storms and was badly damaged. Friends, these verses talk about the anchor of the ship. The fourth time the word being employed figuratively or metaphorically is in the letter to the Hebrews. Used figuratively, it refers to stability or security. It is that on which we place our trust and dependence for safety. Friends, here the writer directly and specifically describes that our hope in God is like a steadfast anchor of the soul, secure and firm. Friends, there are also other verses in the Bible that speak of God as our anchor, our hope and place of safety. This highlights that God is the main anchor that would help us claim victory during the turbulence and storms of life. Friends, let us now look at today's gospel story of Jesus calming the storm. After a day of teaching the crowd and his disciples about the kingdom of God in parables by the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat to sail across to the other side. Friends, the Sea of Galilee is also known as the Sea of Tiberias. In fact, it is not really a sea. It is actually the largest freshwater lake in Israel. Hence, it is also called the Lake of Genesareth. It is about 13 miles long and 8 miles wide. It lies 700 feet below the sea level. And due to its low-lying position in the Jordan Valley and surrounding hills, it is subject to sudden violent storms, which can come up suddenly and be life-threatening for anyone on its waters, which ordinarily are so calm. Friends, such was the storm that the disciples faced when they set off with Jesus across the sea in a wooden fishing boat. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a violent storm came upon the sea, and the small boat was being tossed about and was filling up rapidly with water. Friends, many of the disciples who were in the boat with Jesus were fishermen. It is easy to understand someone who was not used to boats, winds and waves to be frightened by any storm. But this storm was so strong that even the professional fishermen were afraid because they knew the danger. Their skill and their lengthy experience of those waters failed to give them courage. Fearing for their lives, they cried out to Jesus, the carpenter, to save them. But Jesus was a complete contrast to these men. He was sleeping undisturbed on a cushion in the stern of the boat. Of course, any of us could understand that after such a long day of teaching, Jesus was very tired, and so, not long after they sailed, he fell asleep. This testifies to the true humanity of Jesus Christ. He had a physical body like ours that was also subject to fatigue and hunger. He needed rest and time away from the crowds. Friends, in their fear and despair and panic, the disciples turned to accusation. 
they woke Jesus up and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Friends, it sounds like the disciples were a little bit upset with Jesus for sleeping and not caring about their plight. But Jesus heard their cries. Awakened from his sleep, Jesus arose and rebuked the winds and the waves, saying, Quiet, be still. Instantly the wind ceased and the sea became calm. Friends, quiet, be still were the exact same exact words that Jesus had used to silence the unclean spirit and to also heal earlier on a man possessed by a demon, as narrated in Mark chapter 1, so as to prove himself the Lord of everything and to demonstrate his power over anything that is destructive, such as sicknesses, evil spirits, natural elements and even death. Friends, after calming the waves, Jesus turned to his disciples and asked why they were so afraid and had no faith. Because with the sea now at peace, the disciples were amazed and became more fearful of what Jesus did than the storm. They were saying to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? Friends, though they had seen Jesus heal the sick, and cast out demons and perform many other miracles before, it was still hard for them to grasp the power of Jesus. It is because their knowledge about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God in human flesh and their faith in Him, though real, was not yet complete. Of course, the winds and waves obeyed Him, just as they did in the days of creation. His authority over nature is absolute. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth. Friends, what is the message for us? The story of Jesus calming the storm is something which we all can marvel at. It is something which occurred once and cannot occur again. You may never go through a literal storm at sea. In that sense, it can be quite external to us. However, we live in a world where there are many other storms, both literal and figurative. All literal storms, winter storms, summer rain storms, tropical storms such as typhoons, hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, ice storms, etc. all can be nasty, damaging and destructive. Friends. Some people might be facing many literal storms and suffering loss of lives and livelihoods time after time. Sailors and fishermen might be facing dangers often from rough seas, high winds and monstrous waves. At such times, it might be dark all around us. And just like those first disciples, we may give in to fear, terror and hopelessness. But friends, this great miracle reminds us that even in the midst of real dangers at sea and stormy weather, we can courageously call on our Lord Jesus, the Creator and the Master of the Universe, to protect us from all destructive natural forces which surround us. Friends, while some of us may never experience a literal storm at sea or any other natural catastrophes, all of us can encounter figurative storms. If not right now, Certainly, we all face such storms. Unfortunately, in some people's lives, no sooner would one storm clear out than another one would take its place. However, it is comforting to know that Jesus Christ, who exhibited his power over nature, also has the power to bring about peace, calm and safety in any stormy situation. Friends, now this is universally true. He has brought peace that surpasses all understanding, not just to one person at one time and in one place in history, but to many people at various times and around the whole world. It is something which He gives to all who are fearful, and even now He can give it to all of us. He can bring us peace even in the wildest storms in life. 1. He can give us peace in the storms of grief and sorrow. In such times of grief and sorrow, God often seems distant and out of reach. But that's more about what grief does to us than it does about God. 
we are not abandoned even though we feel very alone the scripture promises a number of ways that god shows his care for us we can cling to these promises and find comfort and hope in times of loss jesus tells us the glory of the life to come he tells us of the love of god and the life eternal he tells us that those we love have gone home to be with god the father this gives us the certainty that we shall meet again those whom we have loved and once lost friends the fact is that jesus wants us all to be with him forever he said do not be troubled trust in god and trust in me in my father's house there are many rooms otherwise i would not have told you that i go to prepare a place for you after i have gone and prepared a place for you i shall come again and take you to me so that where i am you also may be friends he has also said you feel sorrowful now but i will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take you your joy from you two he can give us peace in the storms of distress and the struggles of life problems related to work our marriage our families our relationships our business our finances our health etc in times of stress tension frustration confusion helplessness and uncertainty there may be those who ask just as the disciples did jesus don't you care we are dying friends remember if jesus can calm the sea with one word he can also calm our fears for he says peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give to you do not be troubled do not be afraid and just as the psalmist says commit your way to the lord trust in him and he will act but it is sadly true of us that we often say we will humbly submit to jesus guidance and yet we remain obstinately disobedient friends if we humbly surrender and submit ourselves to him and his will daily the true spirit of peace will come as the witness 3 he can give us peace in the storms of worry and anxiety friends worry can be the great destroyer of peace we worry about ourselves our family our friends our work and our state in the world but jesus knowing the human heart and the temptations presented by the cares of this life tells us not to be worried about food and drink for yourself or clothes for your body is not life more than more important than food is not the body more important than the clothes this means that god who has given us life and our physical bodies which are most valuable will also give us food and clothes which are of far less value furthermore jesus says that we are creatures made in god's image and are much more valuable than the birds friends if god provides for birds then surely he will provide for those he made in his own image god who has given us eternal life through the blood of his son jesus christ will also provide for our temporal life so not only should we be unafraid but we should also look to god who will give us peace and comfort as well friends let us trust and believe that god will work it out for us whatever the storm is in our life at the moment big or small amen god bless you